أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاء أَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا هُوَ لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُونَ قلت وهو رب العرش العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed in the name of Allah the most gracious ever merciful Surely a messenger has come unto you from among yourselves grievous to him is that you should fall into trouble he is ardently desirous of your welfare and to the believers he is compassionate merciful but if they turn away say allah is sufficient for me there is no god but he in him do i put my trust and he is the lord of the mighty throne أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته For the ninth lesson of our multidimensional Quran class we will be covering the introduction of Surah At-Tawbah chapter 9 of the Holy Quran The meaning of Tawbah is repentance Surah At-Tawbah was revealed in Medina. This surah consists of 129 verses. It is the only surah in the Holy Quran that doesn't start with Bismillah. It is also called Surah Al-Bara'a as the word Bara'atun is the very first word of the surah. According to Imam Bukhari, Surah At-Tawbah is among the last portions of the Quran to be revealed. Regarding the omission of Bismillah, In essence, Surah Tawbah is not a new surah, but is a part of Surah Al-Anfal, because it is not prefixed by Bismillah, even though the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed that Bismillah be written in the beginning of every surah. And the reason that there is no Bismillah in the beginning of this surah is that the subject matter of both surahs has a very deep and striking resemblance that it makes them appear as one surah. In a hadith Hazrat Ibn Abbas radhiyallahu anhu said I asked Usman bin Affan why did you merge Al-Anfal which is a smaller surah with Al-Bara or At-Tawbah which is a larger one and did not write Bismillah in the beginning of the latter surah To this Hazrat Usman radhiyallahu anhu replied that Al-Anfal was the first surah to be revealed in Medina and At-Tawbah or Al-Bara the last and there existed such a deep and striking similarity between the subject matter of the two that it made them appear as one surah 
and since there was no instruction from the Holy Prophet وسلم, as to these being two separate surahs, I combined them into one. The assumption that Hazrat Usman anhu placed this surah with Surah Al-Anfal possesses no traditional basis. The arrangement of the Quran in its present form was decided by the Holy Prophet وسلم, himself. Hazrat Usman anhu did only this that he added his testimony that this version of the Quran is the same as the one which was put in the form of a book by the orders of Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Then he disallowed all other forms of reading of the Quran except in the dialect of the Hijaz. Now we will go over a brief summary of this surah from the introduction by Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Rabi rahimahullah. Hazur writes, the wars and ensuing trials and rewards were mentioned at the end of Surah Al-Anfal. The matters arising as a result of these wars, i.e. that the enemy would definitely be overpowered and would feel forced to sign treaties with the Holy Prophet ﷺ and his companions عنهم, have been discussed in the very beginning of the Surah. Thus justice demands that as long as they adhere, thus justice demands that as long as they adhere to treaties, Muslims should never violate them. The negative consequences of the violation of the treaties, whose mention starts from Surah Al-Fatiha and is found in various forms in all the preceding surahs, is mentioned in this surah as well. But as the enemy violates the treaties and is meted out with punishments, the believers are warned that in all circumstances they will have to adhere to them. Currently, in this surah is found the discussion that no victory of the believers is or can be the result of their better equipment or their outnumbering the enemy. In this very connection, the Battle of Hunan was mentioned, wherein the Muslim army heavily outnumbered the disbelievers. And some of the Muslims presumed that the disbelievers could not overpower them, whereas when outnumbered, they had been triumphing over huge confederates of the enemy. The Muslims have been exhorted at this point that when they were outnumbered, they had been triumphing only as a result of the supplications of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, the presumption of their outnumbering was being shattered now, but after a road, they would again overpower the enemy as a result of their supplications and steadfastness of this very Prophet ﷺ. Thereafter comes the mention of the bestowal of the abundance of riches, as a result of which the jealous hypocrites fail to desist from criti criticizing, God forbid, the Holy Prophet وسلم, for being unjust in the distribution of war gains. Whereas whatever the Holy Prophet وسلم, distributed was not given to his relatives, rather he spent it on the welfare of migrants, less privileged, indigent, those entangled in problems, people caught in vicious cycles of debt, and those living in straitened circumstances. Thus they have been warned that they would be destroyed if they blamed the trustworthy Prophet وسلم, of dishonesty. In fact, such criticizers themselves are dishonest and a cheat. Here is a brief summary of the Battle of the Book. In the ninth year after Hijrah, the Byzantine forces converged on the borders of Syria, planning to mount an invasion of the inf infant Muslim territories. Rumors of the danger reached the Holy Prophet وسلم, that the Roman army numbered anywhere from 40,000 to 100,000 men. The Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, decided that the best course of action was a preemptive strike. He urged the Muslims to make significant donations and gathered a force of 30,000 fighters, the largest Muslim force so far, and marched to the book. When the Muslim forces reached the book, there were no enemy there. They fled as they got news of the Muslim army's approach and had abandoned the, de the borders. Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, gave the order for the return after a bloodless victory. It is very uncommon in the history of conflict that any conqueror shed so little blood for such a great victory. Here is a map for reference where the book is marked by a red dot.
Now we will look at some significant verses from this surah along with some explanation. The first verse إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَلَمْ يَخْشَى إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَعَسَى أُولَٰئِكَ أَنْ يَكُونُوا مِنَ الْمُهْتَدِينَ He alone can keep the mosque of Allah in a good and flourishing condition who believes in Allah and the last day and observes prayer and pays the zakat and fears none but Allah. So these it is who may be among those who reach the goal. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَاتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Say, if your fathers and your sons and your brethren and your wives and your kinsfolk and the wealth you have acquired and the trade whose dullness you fear and the dwellings which you love are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger and striving in His cause, then wait until Allah comes with His judgment and Allah guides not the disobedient people. فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِيَ اثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْسَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا Allah helped him when the disbelievers drove him forth while he was one of the two when they were both in the cave, when he said to his companion, Grieve not, for Allah is with us. The words one of the two refer to the Holy Prophet ﷺ, and the other one was Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu. The reference in this verse is to the migration of the Holy Prophet ﷺ from Makkah to Medina when he took shelter in a cave called Thawr, accompanied by Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu. لا تقم فيه أبدا لمسجد أسس على التقوى من أول يوم أحق أن تقوم فيه فيه رجال يحبون أن يتطهروا والله يحب المطهرين Never stand to pray therein A mosque which was founded upon piety from the very first day is surely more worthy that thou should stand to pray therein In it are men who love to become purified and Allah loves those who purify themselves are not regarding never stand to pray therein some hypocrites built a mosque near the Kuba mosque with the intention to harm Islam from within Allah Almighty told the Holy Prophet ﷺ to not pray in that mosque as it was built for harm and deception instead he should pray in a mosque built upon piety after the revelation the Holy Prophet ﷺ had that so-called mosque burned down because it was a place of evil rather than good. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen O ye who believe, fear Allah and be with the truthful. Laqad jaakum rasoolum min anfusikum azizun alayhi ma'anittum harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim Surely a messenger has come unto you from among yourselves Grievous to him is that you should fall into trouble. He is ardently desirous of your welfare, and to the believers he is compassionate, merciful. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ But if they turn away, say, Allah is sufficient for me. There is no God but He. In Him do I put my trust and he is the Lord of the mighty throne. Jazakumullah khair. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. In today's class we are going to revise some selected rules of recitation contained in verse 129 of chapter 9. I will read out the verse. 
Following the set format of this class, the rules of recitation in this verse will be covered in points. The first point we will focus today is Ikhfa Noon Sakin. Ikhfa means to hide or cancel whenever Ikhfa of Noon Sakin comes. There will be Ghunna, nasal sound, for two seconds. So all reciters should do light nasal sound with two seconds of prolongation nasal sound if the next letter appears without tashdeed in the text of the Holy Quran after noon sakin or tanmeen, excluding six letters of izhar and one letter of iqlab. Letters of izhar are alif hamza, ha, ayn, ha, Ghain Kha A letter of Iqlaab is Ba Apart from these seven letters If any of remaining letters come after Noon Sakin or Tanween Then there will be two seconds of Ghunna Nasal sound For example Ankum Minkum Next rule is Madelin, soft elongation. In simple words, lean means to ease or to soften. There are two letters which are called Huruful Lean, which means letter of ease, which is Ya and Wow. In the rules of citation, if vow and ya has sukoon on it and the word before the that bear the stroke of fatha it will be pronounced applying the rule of soft elongation ai and au and in this verse they will be recited like this tawallaw alayhi with soft elongation and round voice the next rule we will focus today is Alamatul Waqf, pause mark during Tlawat. Even though there are many Alamatul Waqf and all have different rules, in this verse we have three signs of Waqf, one above the other. But during the station, the top will have preference, which is in this case is Salla. Salla, which is Vasal Mujavvas, preferable to continue, this sign means to link or to connect. So it is better and more desirable not to stop here. Then we have a small Qaf, which is the abbreviated sign of the phrase Qila alayhi al-Waqf, meaning it was said here is stop. Reader has option to either pause or continue. Then we have a small za, which is a sign of proposed pause, al waqful mujawwaz. One may stop here or choose to continue. However, if one does not stop here, he has to complete the citation up to the next stop sign without manifesting any lapse of breath. The next rule is thickness of Ra with Fatha. Whenever letter Ra carries Fatha or Dhamma, it will be pronounced thick. As you can see on your screen, Rabbu, Ra will be pronounced thick. At the end, 
I would read the verse once again, trying to apply all the focused rules. جزاكم الله خيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this segment we will look at the grammatical analysis of Surah Toba, which is chapter 9, verse 129. You have already listened to the Tilawat and the translation of this particular verse. In this verse, there are two main verbs. However, in today's class, we will look at two verbs which have been used, which are Qul and Tawakkal. Let's look at the first verb. The root letters of this verb are qaf, waw, and lam. The lexical meaning of this verb is he said. And this verb is used to express something. Qala. This verb can be used with different variants. Qala lahu, he addressed him. Qala anhu, he related from him. This has specifically been used in ahadith and narrations of the Holy Prophet Qala alayhi He said what was false against him. The mudare or the aorist of this verb is yaqulu and the master or infinitive noun of this verb are qawlan, qaylan, maqalan, maqalatan. The plural of qawlun is aqawilu. An example of this infinitive noun, aqawil, has been used in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Haqqa, chapter 69, verse 45. Walaw taqawwala alayna ba'ad al aqawil. The active participle or ism fail of this verb is qailun. An example of this has been used in the Holy Quran in Surah Yusuf, chapter 12, one, uh, ch- uh, chapter 12, verse 11. Qala The passive form of this verb is qilun. An example of this has been used in the Holy Quran. Wa qilihi ya rabbi. Surah Az-Zukhruf. Chapter 43, verse 89. The command form or amr of this verb is qul. An example of this has been used in the Holy Quran. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, verse 2. Qul has been used many times in the Holy Quran. The analysis of qala, this verb, is as follows. It is fil, madi, past tense, mudhakkar, masculine, wahid, singular, and ghaib, in the third person. Let's look at the next verb, which is tawakkaltu. The root letters of this verb are waw, gaf, and lam. This has come 70 times in the Holy Quran in four different forms. The lexical meaning of this verb is to entrust. Wakala yakilu. The ism fa'il or active participle of this verb is wakilun. An example of this has been used in the Holy Quran in Surah Al An'am, verse 103. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَكِيلٍ The mustar or infinitive noun of this verb is waklan. 
And the mudare or aorist of the verb wakala is yakil. Different verbs are formed from this particular verb to create different meanings which have a greater emphasis. The passive form of this verb is wukila. An example of this has been used in the Holy Quran in Surah As-Sajda, verse 12. bikum. Wakkala yuwakkilu. The master or infinitive noun of this verb is tawkilan. Wakkala fulanan. He made or appointed someone. Wakkala lahul amr. He entrusted the affair to him or entrusted the management of the affair to him. Tawakkala yatawakkalu. The master or infinitive noun of this verb is tawakkulan. And tawakkul means relying upon and trusting in God alone. Tawakkala ala Allah. He relied upon God or he put complete trust in God or he submitted wholly to God. Tawakkala yatawakkalu. The ism fa'il of this particular verb is mutawakkilu. The plural active form of this verb is mutawakkilun. An example of this has been used in the Holy Quran. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14, verse 13. The passive plural form of this verb is mutawakkili. An example of this has been used in the Holy Quran as well. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 160. Tawakkaltu. The analysis of this verb is as follows. It is fil madi in the past tense. It can be used for both mudhakkar and mu'annath. They are wahid, singular, and also mutakallim in the first person. Zakumullah Ahsan al jaza. جمال و حسن قرآن نور جان ہر مسلمہ ہے قمر ہے چاند ہمارا چاند قرآن ہے جمال و حسن قرآن نور جان ہر مسلمہ ہے نظیر اس کی نہیں جمتی نظر میں فکر کر دیکھا بھلا کیوں کر نہ ہو یکتا کلام پا رحمہ ہے بھلا کیوں کر نہ ہو یکتا کلام پاک رحمہ ہے بہار خوبی چمن میں ہے نہ اوسا کوئی بستا ہے 
नवो खूबी चमन में है न ऊसा को बुसता है कला में पाके यजदा का कोई सानी अगर लूलू अम्मा है वगर लाले बदशा है अगर लूलू अम्मा है वगर लाले बदशा है खुदा के कौल से कौले बशर क्यों कर बराबर हो वहाँ कुदरत यहाँ दरमांदगी फरके नुमाया है वहाँ कुदरत यहाँ दरमांदगी फरके नुमाया है मलाइक जिस की हजरत में करे इकरार लाइलमी सुखन में उस के हम ताई कहा मकदूर अरे लोगों करो कुछ पास शाने किबरियाई का जबां को थाम लो अभी अगर कुछ बू ईमा है जबां को थाम लो अभी अगर कुछ बू ईमा है ये कैसे पढ़ गए दिल पर तुम्हारे जहल के पर्दे खता करते हो बाजाओ अगर कुछ खो यजदा है खता करते हो बाजाओ अगर कुछ खो यजदा है हमें कुछ की नहीं भायो नसीहत है गरीबाना कोई जो पाक दिल हो वे दिलो जा उस पे कुर्बा है कोई 
जो पाक दिल होवे दिलो जा उस पे कुर्बा है कमर है चांद औरों का हमारा चांद कुर्बा है जमालो हुसन कुर्बान नूर जाने हर मुसलमान है 